Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at what texel density is and some tricks to speed up UV mapping your models. Consistent texel density is a must for any good UV pack, so let's get into it. Okay, so what is texel density? Texel stands for texture element and is the fundamental unit of texture space. Textures on 3D objects are represented by texels in the same way images are represented by pixels. They are a unit of a texture. They are not the same as pixels because a texel is a container for the pixels. Sometimes people refer to texel density as pixel density or texture density, but they're usually all talking about the same thing. Super confusing, right? So the easiest way to describe this is in a texture, the smallest unit you can have is one pixel. But in UV mapping on a 3D model, the smallest unit you can have is whatever you want because you can tile the texture or scale the UV shell. So each texel can contain a different number of pixels. I guess a texel is kind of like a virtual unit which can contain as few or as many pixels as you want. But who cares about all that shit? What you really care about is getting the highest and most consistent texel density when you UV map your models. So here you can see bad texel density on the left and good texel density on the right. And here you can see bad texel density consistency and good texel density consistency. So always aim for high texel density that's consistent across the models in your scene. It looks really bad when your assets have different texel densities. So the first thing you want to do is define the average texel density for your scene, or better yet, for your whole game. You need to do this before you build any assets. If you're working a contract for someone else, you need to ask them what texel density they want the assets delivered in. So I like to work in 400 units in Maya equals 2048 pixels. This is the texel density we've used for most of the games I've worked on. This gives you good resolution versus repeated details, since ground terrain textures can technically tile as much as you want, but you want to maintain consistency with the props as well, which can't tile because they're unwrapped. So how you look at this in Maya is create a plane and scale it to 400 units. If the plane is UV mapped exactly 0 to 1, this will be 400 units in Maya equals 2048 pixels because we've got a 2048 texture applied to it. Okay, so go to create and then go to polygon primitives and then plane and then whatever, I'll just scale that a little bit. Uh, so then you can go over to the channel box here and you can actually just select all these and type in 400 and hit enter and then boom. So we know the plane is exactly uh, 400 units big in Maya. And so now I'm just going to go into, where is it? Rendering editors, open up the hypershade here and just quickly go to my ref textures folder, drag that in there, just frame it, select this, right click and say assign. And so now I have a plane, which is 400 by 400 units in Maya, and I've applied a 2K texture to it or 2048 uh, by 2048 texture. So now I've set my texel density for the scene. So I've got this grid texture on it. So I know if everything else in my scene matches this grid, I can use this as kind of the base uh, for the whole environment. So none of my objects, um, if possible, should have bigger or smaller uh, checkerboard uh, on them if I apply this texture and they're UV mapped correctly. Thanks to Cody Ritchie for this checkerboard pattern. I've actually been using this thing since 2003. Okay, so this thing's mapped perfectly, but what if I build something new or what if I were to duplicate this and move it over here? Let's see, I'm just going to snap the pivot there, snap this there, and then uh, it's perfect right now, but let's say I scale it. So I'm going to scale it way bigger, and you're going to see here's a texel density. Uh, mismatch where like this thing looks like re really low res and it's all pixelated and blurry uh, and this thing's nice and crisp. So for simple shapes there's a trick you can do. Uh, just uh, select the one that's out of the texel density range and go into uh, UV and then go planar and go to the options box and you want to do Y and keep height um, so because we want to project uh, from the top down and to project. And then you'll see in the channel box here, you'll actually get projection width height and you can type in 400, similar to how we scaled the other assets. So it's kind of the same difference. So hit 400 and boom. So you have the exact same texel density now 
uh, as the previous one. And you might notice, oh, what the hell is going on here? The edge is all uh, screwed up or whatever. And that's because it projects it from the center out. So if you wanted to fix that as well, you could just select the UVs and snap the pivot down to there and then snap it to the corner grid. And then I'll just turn the edge off here so you can see there it's actually perfectly exactly the same. So if I select both uh, the UV shells uh, at the same time, oh, just a second here, there, there we can see it a bit better. So you can see that's our original one there. And this is in relative space. It's exactly scaled the perfect amount to hit our ratio of 400 units in Maya equals 2048 pixels, even though that this has been scaled to an arbitrary size. Now you might say, well, that's cool, but uh, that only works on simple shapes. I have a complex prop where a planar map won't cut it. And that's great. I got you covered. There are two additional techniques to achieve this same result. So the first technique, you can use the sew together tool to uh, get the correct pixel density. I'll show you how to do that. It's kind of like a secret trick. Uh, first, I'm going to select this face, and I'm going to use that little custom tool that I built to copy the material to the clipboard and paste it onto this guy, save myself some time. So you can see this guy's textile density is all out of whack. He's all like super big, that's random, that's rotated. This is bigger than that, even within itself. Um, so uh, what we can do here, actually I'm just gonna turn this on so we can see what we're doing. Um, and we can use a trick. So uh, let's just make this uh, example even more obvious. So I'm going to select this UV shell, whoops, I already had it. Select it, I'm gonna scale it up like, Oops, massive here. So it's like way too high uh, density compared to what we're shooting for, which is the same as the rest of the set here. So what you can actually do is you can, we know that this guy, let's select this guy here, and we'll just use our other trick to um, do the planar map that we saw before with the Y and uh, keep height width and apply that and set it to be 400. Boom. Okay, so we know that this part is the correct texel density, and then this is too wrong. It's too high texel density. So the cool thing is what we can do now is we can just find a shared edge between the two. So it looks like that edge is shared between both. And uh, we can hold down shift and right click on the keyboard and mouse. And we can use the stitch together tool. And if you go into the options box for the stitch together tool, you can say the smallest to the largest. Um, so what that means is it's going to sew the smaller one to the largest always, so you don't have to fiddle with any options. So we actually want to scale this guy down so he gets sewn to the one with the correct texel density. This will actually be a more obvious example as well. So you can see here we've got super blurry and big, and we're targeting this, which is our 400. So we're going to select this edge, it doesn't actually matter which edge, just any edge on the target surface, and biggest, uh, sorry, smallest is going to go to biggest, so shift plus right click, stitch together, boom, and you get perfect texel density because it scales it and inherits it as it stitches together. Just turn that edge off, you see better. So it's actually perfect. And now we don't actually want to lay out the asset like that, so all we have to do now is just find the edge here and uh, just go to the cut tool and then just reseparate that. It's the couple, whoops. Which one is it? This guy? Yeah, I'll just cut them all. Cut that again. And there we go, it's separated. So I've kind of tricked the tool into doing the scaling for me perfectly so I can get a really complex shape here, stitch it into a single face temporarily, cut it back out and then not have to worry about uh, fiddling with UV settings or scaling it manually or lining up the grid or anything like that. Let's do that to the bottom part of the asset as well, just for fun here. So should have turned that on before so we could see more clearly, but whatever. So um, this thing's already been pre-UV mapped, so I'm just gonna scale it down. So it is really small. And again, I'm gonna just choose a shared edge. Sure, good enough. And then just stitch together and boom, done. Perfect texel density once again, and then quickly cut that guy out and then separate it and then pack it uh, however you want. And then if you look down here, you'll also notice this is our reference object, the uh, plane that we had from before that we mapped originally, and you can just check out the checkers on our reference object, and they're the same size as the checkers on our freshly mapped object. So you can confirm 
that they are indeed mapped correctly. The next trick is even easier than that and is super powerful. So I'm just gonna open up the UV toolkit here on the side. Uh, if you don't have that open on your version of Maya, where is it in tools, hide show UV toolkit. Now uh, let's just change this guy's UVs to be like totally out of whack. We'll scale them way down. So they're way far out of our um, average pixel density that we're trying to achieve. We just wanna get these guys just we want a magic button that we just click and it just goes boom and, and goes to our uh, magic pixel density. So what you can do is you can go into this hideous tool and you can open up the uh, transform rollout. And then at the very bottom of the transform rollout, there's this hidden tool here. So what you can do is you can type in 2048 because that's our texture size that we're going for. And you can select your reference object, which you already have pre-mapped here and you can click the get button and the get button is going to take the texel density from that asset and paste it into here this number here so i guess 400 units equals 2048 pixels somehow maps to 5.12 i don't know what that means it's totally meaningless to me and you don't need to know either because it won't matter so once we have that value in there then we can just select our object and we can click set boom one click done so you can always just come back into this tool at any time and just click set, 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 set. Uh, so that is like super powerful. The best part is it works on a UV shell basis. So you don't have to change your whole model if you're just trying to set part of the texel density. So for example, I don't want to affect these. These are all done perfectly. So I just want to get that one. So you just do it on UV selection and boom, set, you're done. Magic. So the next thing to talk about is to hit this texel density down here, that's awesome, we hit it, but this doesn't fit into the zero to one UV space anymore. So this can't be a prop, but we want this, whoops, we want this to be a prop. So let me just press control L here to lay out the UVs into the zero to one space. And when I lay them out, the checkers get much bigger because I'm not using enough of the UV space. And this is a terrible pack, obviously. So my goal is to unwrap my prop so the uh, checkers match with the reference object that we have below. And so what that means is uh, for everybody out there that's unwrapping their props uniquely, and by that I mean every single UV shell takes space in the zero to one UV space, that's actually a terrible idea. I highly don't recommend that. That doesn't work in the games industry. You need to hit your texel density targets um, or your model will look blurry and pixelated. Uh, so you have to use all types of hacks and tricks to try and to try and pack your UVs as tight as possible and as big as possible. Uh, so let's just select that stuff again, and we can use our magic set button. Cool. So we've got our perfect texel density. But um, now you have to spend uh, 100 hours uh, trying to pack all these guys together. And so how I would start that is I would start actually like mirroring faces and uh, um, butterflying stuff and stacking UV shells. So stack all of these guys on top of here. I'm just gonna do a really shitty job of this and just for demonstration purposes, this would never work to actually texture, but you get the idea. You stack those guys, those four faces can repeat that same texture and then that fits into the shell uh, a lot better than before. But um, same sort of thing. You could stack all of these guys. You could separate these into their own UV shell and stack them. Whoops, rotate that to the right. Stack that guy on that guy and stack this one on this one. I'm not going to bother lining it up because this is just for demonstration purposes. Stack that guy into that guy. But you really need to choose where you want unique texture detail and where you can repeat texture detail and then whatever, you'll have to figure out a way to cut that guy up and stick him in there as well to, to achieve the highest uh, texel density and therefore the highest resolution textures. So earlier we talked about consistent texel density across all assets in the scene and that's what looks best because when you have mismatches, it looks awful. And uh, now I'm going to tell you to break that rule. So uh, here is an asset that uh, I made a little while back. Let's just uh, apply the checkerboard texture from the other scene to it. And you're going to see that 
this is all good. It's all mapped as high res as it can be. You can actually, you can see here in the UV editor, see all this red stuff. That's how much I've repeated. This empty space is actually, this texture is shared from another asset. So that's actually filled up if I brought the other asset into the scene with this. But all this red stuff is reused and shared. You can see actually on the back here, because it's not that important, on the back side of it, this metal bit, let me just undo that, this metal bit here, it's actually quartered. So I only mapped a quarter of it, and then I stack it on top of itself. If you look closely, you'll actually see the butterflying happening right there. So let's just turn the checkerboard back on. Um, so what I wanted to say is uh, keep all this stuff uh, consistent as much as you can. And then when you're done with your UV map, if you have extra space left over, I recommend that you take really small details and actually scale those up. So you can see here the bolts here. I've actually scaled those up. So you can see the numbers in the checker are actually higher res here. And what I've found in games is that if you map everything perfectly to this, which is the highest I can get to, to fill in the space or whatever, um, that's going to look fine. But on smaller details, that they'll look super blurry and they'll look super pixelated and people will zoom in on the camera and they'll see a little bolt or a screw or something or a latch or whatever. Uh, and it'll look really awful. Even though it is the same pixel density and it's consistent, it just looks too low res and awful. So for like these little micro details, which I think are actually mapped right up here, once I've finished my general unwrap, if I've got a little bit of space left over, I'll take all my micro details and I'll scale them up roughly like a quarter more or a half high re higher res than the general pack. And I find that that just looks generally better. Um, it's kind of a perceptual thing. Although it's incorrect, smaller details often look better if they are higher res than the more broad details. Um, so creating a little bit of inconsistency there when you're done with your uh, UV unwrapping uh, is actually desired. So I would recommend doing that um, on all the models that you work on. So this is the little road, uh, road sign set that I had to build with a bunch of different shapes. And the, uh, the constraint was they wanted me to use a single texture. Uh, so if you see, I'll select, so let me just uh, select all of these guys here. So you can see it's filled up as much as I could uh, and overlapped as much as I could for the different shapes. So that's the final UV pack there. And let's just check the uh, final UV wastage. So to do that, I believe you go into tools. Nope, sorry, it's view, heads up display. This is a bug. It turns itself off even though it's turned on. And uh, go in the UV statistics and hit apply again. And then you can see down here, it looks like I've used 82% of the UV space. Uh, so that's pretty good. Um, generally on games that I worked on, I would target a minimum of 70%. I wouldn't go anything less. If you're doing your unwrap and you're coming in below 70%, then your model is probably going to look pretty soft and blurry and potentially have pixelated textures on it. If you like this video and want to see more game art tips and tricks, please click the subscribe button. As usual, any links will be in the description. If you got any questions, post them in the comments area. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have an amazing day.